Hey everybody, Scoutcrafter here again. First of all, uh, what a great response we got from Monday's video. I did not expect that. I mean, it just goes to show how terrific you really are out there. I mean, uh, every one of your responses were just outstanding. Um, all of them. I mean, every one about this screwdriver here from Monday. Uh, we were talking about everybody. Some people ask about wood scales. And yeah, I thought about that. I was saying, you know, that'd be a cool thing to put four wood scales in there and put it on the lay, turn it down or on the uh, belt sander. Uh, great idea. And um, there's a whole bunch of things we went through. And then as far as the color, color thing was funny because uh, everybody, <laughs> there was so many different. Some people like the yellow. A lot of people wanted blue, red, green. It's amazing because when I did that little uh, computer thing where, you know, you put the different colors on the handle, I thought they kind of all looked good. They all had some kind of uh, something about them that looked good. So today we're going to do something a little and bit different. For today's video, what we're going to do is um, a, a few things that we want to get out of the way. Some viewer questions, things like that. Uh, you can see me behind me. This is my lathe station, the wood lathe station. This is where uh, I have my uh, wood lathe. But if you look back here to uh, behind my right shoulder, uh, you see the dake is right here, everybody's favorite. But if you look there, you see what's under that cover? You know, a lot of people ask me, how come you don't use a media blaster, sand blaster? I'm gonna cover that Okay, now. here she is, uh, uncovered after 20 years, maybe? No, like more like 15 years, next to the, uh, ver the band saw that I never use. Anyway, uh, this is a uh, what they call a uh, meteor blaster or sand blaster, some people call it. And um, over here, I put up some lights here. You see, switch this one and this one. You can see it lights up the inside of the... Now we're looking through the glass and you can see that's the inside of the cabinet. And you can put your hand through the gloves here and work on whatever you have to work on. So... Um, Actually, the reason I bought this cabinet, and then soon after I bought the cabinet, I transferred at work to an area that had a full size, bigger than this, uh, media blaster. So I really didn't have no use Now, for it. back then, when I first went to sh work in that area of the shop, uh, I was bringing in all kinds of tools and, and sandblasting them every night and things like that. But what I found out is uh, media blasting or any kind of... Uh, blasting that you do on a tool is puts microscopic little divots in the tool and even though you wire brush it afterwards to try and smooth them out uh it's it attracts rust and it always a lot of my tools have started rusting after that so after that i i didn't use it anymore went to the wire brush method and um i found it to be uh superior for me because in my area the uh it was just leading to too much problems with the uh the blasting so that's why i don't use it uh, let's get okay, to our next second. on the list. We have uh, years and years ago a friend of mine his dad passed away and was a machinist had a whole bunch of stuff down the basement and he had this uh, Really rusting milling attachment and a lot of people were, were saying about they were interested in the candy paint And they said they wondered if he could do a tool with that So let's okay, go check what we have out. here is an antique South Bend milling attachment that would go on your lathe or something and uh, it was an indexer and what that means is um, let's say you wanted to drill a certain amount of holes around an item. You would attach this to your machine, whether a, a lathe or a mill, and by using this dial here that's incremented, you can spin it a certain amount of times and it break it down into get how many holes you want. Let's say you want a hole every uh, 10 degrees or you want 20 holes. You can evenly space them just by spinning this and then drilling or mach machining, whatever you want to do. Anyway, uh, this thing looked like it came out of the sea when I got it. It was all rusty and uh, I did this maybe 15 years ago and I did it with that uh, candy apple that uh, metal cast paint so held up really good. It's a uh, you know great paint and you can do different machines and things like that so it's it's really good paint and you should try okay, it. Okay next we have something I want to show you and you're probably wondering where is all this leading to? Hopefully it'll all make sense in the end. I don't know, but uh, next item I want to show you something really Okay, cool. I made this about 17, well, I, about 2000, a little after the year 2000 I made this, and I just got a milling machine and a lathe, and you know, you want to practice, so I, I made this and this contraption that you're probably wondering, what the heck is it? 
but uh, it's actually, it's a finger pow powered motor. Let me show you how it now works. You can see here, this is like a kind of a walking, they call this a walking beam design. And uh, I just made this up, sketched it out, made it up. And I wanted to use a bunch of things that had scraps around the shop. And this is all made from scraps and it's really cool. It was really beautiful when I first made, I mean, the thing glistened like crazy, but it, since then it's been, you know, got all dusty. And I used to bring it down to the scouts and we used to run finger powered machines with this. And I'll show you one of those later. And uh, I did the pin striping and things like that with uh, uh, actually one of those old German drafting tool kits pretty cool and uh, turned this on the lathe it was a hunk of metal and it was just something uh, you know everything here was made this here though these are uh, actually piston if you could see here uh, they're connecting rods for a piston over here and that, and that piston was for a um, compressor in the bus it used to be an air compressor in the bus and and over here this was sheet metal but this is what we want to talk about now you see how it's jeweled that's where we're going with this i'm thinking that's where we should go the next step now how this me. works by the way is there's a little uh let me straighten it out here there's a little um button or a press pad here that you push down and when you push it down that powers the wheel and it's forward or reversing and just a little bit of pressure here through the design will give you quite a bit of torque and that little pulley here you could run different machines and it's so i i use so many bearings on this thing that it's uh, really smooth now here you can see everything it's kind of counterbalanced and i i mixed some brass and i was trying out different things brass and aluminum mixture and there's all these bearings in here bearings in here and uh i just thought it would be cool because i i have a thing for bearings that i thought it'd be really cool to use Really smooth, runs nice and straight. And here's where you would put the little line to whatever motor that you wanted to use. Now, there was a whole bunch of accessories that you could run off of this pulley. And one of them was something like this here. And uh, I don't know if you ever seen one of these. This is, uh, goes back to like the 1800s. And what it was is it was a way to make little motion pictures. And if you look over here, there's a picture of a cat. And this cat, they have each picture goes a little bit further. And when you hold it like this and spin it, the cat looks like it's walking. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. See that? That's pretty cool. Okay, hang in there. We're getting to what we're talking about. Now, you're probably wondering what this is all about. This is my first attempt at jeweling. It's called engine jeweling. Or, uh, and you see this, it's like an embellishment here. And it was big in the, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s. They used to put on fire trucks and things like that. But look how nice that looks, right? With, you know, how it catches the light and things like that. I was thinking, how great would that be on a tool along with the can? Okay, now that we wasted all that time on all that, uh, this is today's project. Today's project uh, is a finish up of the set. Of the three, remember we did the 356, we did the 10, we did the 8, now we're doing a 6. I purposely bought a pair of flaking nickel. You see the nickel that's all flaking off? I hate nickel coatings when they don't stick. And that's the one, because a couple people asked me, what do you do if they're starting to flake off? We're going to tackle that now, so let's take it apart. Okay, here we are in a post wire brush evaluation and, and you're wondering, can it be saved? And you see what happens with the nickel? You see over here, this starts to peel off and you can see it's a, that's what happens. That's, and look underneath how nice it is underneath. So that's what we want to get to. Just get the top nickel coating off and, and hopefully this will look good. So let's get to it. Now we're in the uh, middle of polish and I was just uh, looking, if you look over here, you could see here remnants right here of the nickel. You see it? And you could see remnants over here of the nickel. Now uh, that's on there pretty solid so you don't have to worry about it, but you know it's not uniform. You see over here the remnants of the nickel, how it uh, picks up a shine because it's, uh, here's the polished steel, the nickel, and the nickel is a little bit shiny, but if you notice you know, that's not uniform. So we have to go back to the belt sanding and take that off. Okay, we're calling this project done. And let me tell you, these were tough. I think these are tougher than when you just get them all rusty to get that nickel off. But we did, we got all that nickel off and uh, it's nice and 
mirror polish the whole thing looks beautiful doesn't it and works like a charm so now i have the full set the croida 356 set this was the 10 inch the 8 inch and now we have the 6 inch we kept some of the nickel on the handle as you could see but uh you never ever know it from here but it's, it is all smooth and everything is uh nice now we can make a little display case for those three but um Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was kind of all over the place, but thanks very much for tuning in. Take care. We are done with the Crowder 356 set. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>